In 1984, a behavioral scientist named Roger Ulrich did a, a very interesting study of gallbladder surgery patients. And this was in a fairly large hospital, so there were a lot of patients in there having gallbladder surgery. And what he did was simply uh, observe and record which patients had uh, some kind of view out their window, a view of a tree or the grass or something, view of nature, and which rooms had a view of a brick wall. And then he recorded um, data from their medical records. And what he found, which was really quite stunning, what he found was that patients who had views of natural objects, like uh, trees and bushes and plants of various sorts, those patients had lower pulse rates. They um, went home, and, and at this time you stayed in the hospital for quite a few days with gallbladder surgery. So uh, at this time, patients with views of nature went home two to three days earlier than the brick wall viewing patients. Uh, they had fewer calls for nursing help. And um, these this hospital used one of those deals where you, you administer your own painkiller. There's like a button you push and you get a, a drop of morphine, I think. Um, and the data showed that patients with views of nature used uh, measurably fewer painkillers. So since 1984, um, Roger Ulrich's research has gone on to inform a whole field of architecture known as evidence-based design. It's based on the idea that views of nature and natural materials are better for our health, better for our thinking, better for our mental health, our ability to learn. And so there's a whole field of evidence that's been collected about such things. And it informs uh, school design, hospital design, therapeutic landscape design, and so forth. Some research has also been done on how this affects real estate prices and um, the body of data now shows that actually you can if you're a builder you can get a price premium if you if your building has views of nature and of course there are social equity concerns here so this is why um, cities like portland in their beautiful pearl district have laws that say when you build in a beautiful place, a certain percentage of your housing must be affordable housing. Well, anyway, the term biophilia was coined by the great Edward O. Wilson in 1983. And I don't know if you're familiar with him. He's actually an entomologist. He specializes in insects, uh, in particular social insects like bees, ants, and termites. But he has gone on to do a vast body of research in um, other areas related to ecology. He's just a, uh, very prolific. And so he coined this phrase biophilia uh, and then working in partnership with Stephen Kellert to uh, develop the body of research. And the idea is that uh, it, it's rooted in evolution. So early in, in the time of our uh, hominid ancestors, hominids, uh, human animals who responded to nature, who were able to find where the food was, where the water was, where to stay safe from predators, if they were able to do that and survive long enough to reproduce, that trait got passed on to their offspring. And over the many thousands of generations, over the last million years, this trait has been passed on and on and on. And in modern humans, it now surfaces as this 
um, genetically based uh, desire and emotional need to affiliate with nature and with living plants and animals in general. Bio is a word that means life and philia is a word that means love. Those are Greek roots. So uh, biophilia means love of life. And we find now that um, in modern humans, we are especially attracted to flowing water and in ancient um, millennia, flowing water um, gave you a better chance to survive. We're attracted to lush vegetation and to flowering things. And uh, in ancient millennia, those were likely signals of things to eat. And we are attracted to Spaces that give us prospect, our ability to get up high and see if there are any predators coming, and spaces that give us refuge, places where we can be protected. And so uh, prospect and refuge are very important to people. And you will find that um, places like parks that have sort of a pastoral setting have all of these features, the flowing water, the rich vegetation, prospect and refuge. If, if you look at parks that are really well loved, you'll notice that pastoral uh, prospect and refuge kind of style. Well, uh, as a genetic tendency, as something that uh, is in our DNA, this is a, a trait that that needs to be developed in childhood. So these uh, these genes get switched on and off. They get switched on through learning. And uh, if we're growing up in a concrete jungle and we never see a bit of nature, after some years those genes switch off and this genetic tendency tends to atrophy. So this is why scientists now tell us it's particularly important for children to be introduced to nature. It, uh, it switches on those genes and it builds that biophilic tendency. A, a large body of research now shows that people learn better in the presence of nature. In addition, research on um, workplace uh, quality of workplace environment and productivity shows that workers are far more, pro I shouldn't say, I don't mean to exaggerate, workers are about uh, 15 to 25 percent more productive in um, biophilic environments and they claim fewer sick days. Here is a space in the Health and Wellness Building at LCC and uh, this space was not necessarily designed with uh, biophilia in mind, but when you go there you can see, oh my gosh, it is biophilic, and you notice that this, this study alcove uh, is a wonderful place to think, and people really like being there. Meanwhile, Riverbend Hospital, which I mentioned earlier, Riverbend Hospital was explicitly designed on evidence-based design principles. Um, if you read the, the uh, design briefs from the architects, you will see that they were definitely um, based on this evidence-based research and definitely based on biophilic design. And if you visit that hospital, you will find, well, first of all, the site was chosen so that it had a view of the river. There's the beautiful Mackenzie River. And it had a view of the Coburg Hills, surrounded by trees. Here's some beautiful tall fir trees. So the site was carefully selected. And then the patient rooms were carefully oriented and designed so that every single room, every single room 
has a view of nature without exception and I know this from talking to the designers and from doing a tour there before it opened um, and as we will see in the next set of slides it in addition to the views of nature it uses nature-based materials throughout the hospital 